I was a nerd when I was young. I don't think I was a jerk about it. My first real interaction with geeks, living in the dorms my first year in college, the big video game then was James Bond. It was four player and you would materialize in this, this house and you all had guns and you would run around and shoot each other and I thought this is cool that you know this is what you do and you're but no one would listen to the fact that I had no idea how to play this game and it and it was as much me trying to to learn how to play the game without instantly being killed by one of the other three as me not understanding why the other three would want to play with somebody who didn't know how to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I. that's hard to see, right? That's hard to know how one avatar judges another avatar. I mean, really, who knows what happens when you you turn off the, the game and you load up some other game. Do they hang out with one another, right? Um, is, is this cool? Is he the cool kid? Games, when I was young, were very much about dominance. I don't get that from what I see here. I, I feel there's lots for people to do. If you may want to engage in competition, that's that seems to be the primary focus of this basketball game. You have chosen to divert from that and explore a, a really different kind of experience than I imagine this this archetypal urban basketball player character would otherwise experience. I I don't know if you've experienced that. I don't I don't know if you're living through this character. But but I don't feel like anyone is judging you like I felt I was judged in previous eras of video games. Wow. I, I mean, I, I never thought of it that way. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm watching, uh, while, you know, while you're talking, I'm watching this, uh, this, this glitch guy uh, dancing around, right? Like dancing through the... Uh, the aquariums, I'm assuming it's saltwater aquarium. He's having a wonderful time, and then look, there's all these other basketball players just trapped over there, right? Just trapped. Just saying, hey, I want to be out there uh, walking through water and on water and uh, right through concrete steps. But then I hear what you're saying, this personal, you know, set of experiences with games and produce and I can't help but think is this just someone showing off right is this is this someone saying they can do it and you should be able to do it too I'm really getting bent on people saying the word you when they mean me uh, yeah, you were you were guilty of that. You said when you walk through this scene, and 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 you meant I or me. You're 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 subjecting me to your understanding of this, and it's it's prevalent everywhere. Newscasters and, and people on reality TV, and and you know, all you know all. All kinds of people are using you when they mean me or I. I I think that's true. I'm so glad you said that. Because, you know, I I look at you and I see see a lemon. And that's that's part of my privilege. I'm happy, right? I'm happy. I, 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 I like to watch this. The, the, the prancy thing is making me happy. The sunshine. Are, are we all the same? Is that the goal here? Is to, is to define the limits of our imagination? And, and, and is that showing up in the language I use? 
when I really mean I? I feel that people saying you when they mean me or I is really indicating a breakdown of one's controlled vocabulary that embody our self and our consciousness have have collapsed to the point where people aren't even referring to themselves when talking about themselves and and I, I don't know if that's related to the proliferation of avatars in, in games like this and maybe our fascination with glitches is enacting this disembodiment from our locations and ourselves and our spaces and we feel most comfortable in this glitch because we've become uncomfortable referring to ourselves with lexical terms such as me and I. I, I think you're right. I really do. I feel like I'm, I'm supposed to be this, this critic who knows how to reconcile the things that we're talking about, right? Who's mastered the jargon and, and terminology and and it's hard, I, I, I mean well, right? But everyone looks at me like everything I say is, is sour. You know, that the taste that it leaves in their mouth, I, I wanna be sweet. I wanna be, I wanna be different. In filmmaking, diegetic objects all have a purpose. And if a diegetic object doesn't have a purpose, then that indicates a very intentional move by the filmmaker to create a non sequitur that relates to the themes or the plots of the film. I don't know if this game is in the continuum of filmmaking and narrative games such that those rules apply. I would hope that the director of this game was mindful enough to consider that this character might be walking around the objects that otherwise make up the background of the basketball court. Now that I'm seeing this this uh, giant blob that clearly looks like an error in the background. It, it really makes me wonder if there's any intentionality at all in this game. And maybe we're critiquing a game that's not complex enough to warrant a critique. That's such a good point. I read somewhere that uh, Spike Lee directed part of this game. I don't know if it was this part of the game. How long do you think this goes on for? Not the video, I mean, this, this space. There's a certain quality to this glitch where it asks you to reflect back on the actions that got you into this world to begin with. He keeps this figure, he keeps dancing in the urban basketball street style it asks us to consider whether games like this caused the urban culture to have these kind of physical movements or vice versa but to grow up in the urban environment is very much to confront the voidness of the urban landscape around you. There's been 
film after film and game after game that have explored the the emptiness that comes with living and growing up in urban environments and here this character is confronted with that void in a way that is so over the top that it once again makes me question whether the directors of this game were either very mindful of these ironies or completely oblivious uh, to what they were constructing at all. I, I, I don't even know how to respond. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's how I feel watching that character listening to what you said everything that's behind us now everything that's in front of us i mean where are we 